This episode of the Long Run Podcast is sponsored by Sketches. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special, a very special long run show. Yes, we've got the main man himself. We pulled out all the stops for this one. We're even using a different recording system to make sure we had him because I once I wasn't going to let him go as soon as I got my as soon as he bit on my little hook. So we've got the main man, James Dunn, in the top. He's above me tonight because we're using Zoom. Um, and he's here. And if you don't know anything about James, I'm going to introduce, I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. But if you're interested or you should be interested, but if you don't know anything about strength and conditioning as a runner, or you want to do more of it, or you want to find anything about it, you need to listen to this. This next 30 minutes will change you as a runner. Now I'm, I'm not overselling that because honestly, some of the stuff that's going to come out of this, you're, it's going to blow your mind. And that's the reason, firstly, because I just love the guy, but secondly, I'm here because I need to learn as well. Okay. So no further ado, James, introduce yourself and tell everybody why you're the main man. Well, mate, thank you firstly for having me on. We've been trying to do this for a long time. We've had, <laughs> looking back to the DM conversations, this has been this has been a while trying to tee this one up. So yeah, I'm glad we're here. Um, and don't let Chris fool you. Um, we're on Zoom for my technical ineptitude, not for uh, any other reason. So yeah, I'm glad we found something that worked. But um, I mean, yeah, well, let's let's talk tonight about lots of strength conditioning stuff for runners, injury prevention stuff about uh how to how to keep us all running strong and running injury free because that really is my bread and butter that's what i've been doing for the last oh well i, I guess since 2007 on youtube since 2010 um you know, i can't believe i've been working with runners since 2007 really that's uh, that seems like a very long time ago now i mean prior to that i was the rugby guy um before transitioning into this this kind of running world and my background's in sports rehab so you know, very much the world of sports injuries and helping runners from a very specific standpoint of kind of exercise therapy. So taking injured runners and working them through routines, workouts, et cetera, et cetera, to get them back to full training, back to performance levels they want to be at. Um, and of course, back in the day, that was all entirely face-to-face, -face, entirely one-to-one. -one. But now in this modern world, um, it's pretty much almost entirely online um and i really i seem to have built the youtube channel and the, the website etc to be able to reach as many runners as possible and help them with exactly that help them recover from injuries help them prevent injuries and help them just become stronger more kind of bulletproof versions of themselves mm -hmm. um you know to, to go chase their, their running goals we all know what the we all know what the big challenges are realistically as runners. It is staying injury free. And we all know what the big common injuries are. If mm -hmm. we haven't had a handful of them ourselves, our friends in combination almost certainly have them covered. And um, yeah, the, the more we can do to help ourselves not just become another injured runner, the better. So let's talk about that tonight. Yeah, that's that's a good shout. I think probably the chances are anybody listening to this as the podcast or watching this back on YouTube has probably come across one of your videos. Right. I'm guessing uh, if you haven't, make sure you do check out James's uh, YouTube channel because there's like where well, there's just pieces of gold on there. If you're if you're a runner and you're looking whether it's a, a warm up routine or to do your stretches for. I mean, there's, I've done some of the stretches and they're just amazing. But what I like about it, it's not blowing smoke up his bum because he's here, but they're simple and, and you can do them at home. And it's like it, it's that kind of. You know, the, the, keeping it easy, keeping it simple. I know I said the word a couple of times now, but it, it is honestly, I think as runners, we overthink some of this stuff and there is a lot of information out there and it's bleeding confusing for most people. Yeah, you know, I think we, we all want to just, we all run, but we all want to do the best we can. And if you can do a good warm up and you can find something like on James's channel or, or you know, via the website and you can get some of that and then you can do your cool down and your stretches when you start getting aches and pains like we all do then that's why it's so important and it's so awesome to have to have James on. So I think I think where we start, if you don't mind, is, mm. and this might sound a bit silly to you, but as a runner, 
spell out the benefits of doing the strength and conditioning. Because it is, I'm telling you now, we all ignore it because mainly because of time. Uh, and it's funny, this is great because I had a conversation with Ben uh, who ran London with me and he's just about to train, start training for Chicago. He's actually listened for once and he's dropping one of his runs to get into the pool. So he's doing some gym work that he's added in for this time because he wants to beat his time. But he's actually dropping one run for going in the pool. So he's listened. So if you wouldn't mind just sort of spelling out nice and clearly the benefits of that strength and conditioning for us runners. Firstly, you're absolutely spot on. Us runners, we just want to run. And I I fully respect that. I fully appreciate that no matter how hard I bang the drum, um, first and foremost, it's going to be I want to choose running over cho- choosing doing a bunch of you know, 90 minutes in the gym, doing a bunch of exercises. For most of us, we run because we don't like doing 90 minutes in the gym, doing a bunch of exercises. So firstly, it's my job to try and um, find a a palatable way of delivering it, which we'll talk about later on. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if we're talking about the benefits and the reason to do it, let's just look at what running is in the first place. So we're talking about distance running here, obviously, when there may be some sprinters in the audience, but we're talking about getting out there and even we consider short distances we consider like 5k as being a short distance in comparison to marathon ultra marathon but even training for running 5k we break that right down and we think about the number of strides we're taking in a given training run the number of strides we're taking when we're out there doing park run it's very 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 repetitive let alone if we go 10k half marathon marathon ultra this sport is incredibly repetitive, incredibly um, high high load as well. Okay, that kind of goes without saying. We all know it's a, a high impact sport in comparison to cycling or swimming, but it's the repetitive, unchanging nature of running on for many of us fairly consistent pavements, fairly consistent hard flat surfaces. A bit better if you're doing lots of trail, definitely. But for most of us, let's be real, it is, even if you do one trail run a week, it is getting out there and pounding the pavements. We get into a place where for our own individual strength and weaknesses, our own individual areas of perhaps instability or even imbalance because of previous injury, the effect of that cyclical pounding again and again and again, that cyclical movement pattern again and again and again, will pick up weak points. Mm -hmm. Okay, You'll find your weak links. And it may be that you know you can train comfortably for 5k, 10k. Sweet, regardless of those weak links, not a problem. But you know what? You've signed up for a half marathon with your mate, and all of a sudden take that jump up. Hmm. Actually, that increase in weekly weekly volume, and the big the big kicker is when people increase their volume and their intensity all at once. But either way, it's that that kind of jump up in training can start to begin to expose some of those weak links. So what we can do, if we accept that running is so cyclical and so repetitive in nature, we can start mitigating that by adding a bit more variety in our training through starting to incorporate different exercises that work other muscle groups, not just the muscle groups that we use for running. Because we talk a lot about strengthening the important muscle groups for running. Yes, that is something. But actually becoming a more rounded athlete and thinking if running is such a straightforward movement pattern we can start actually building a more i guess holistic type approach to how we look at athlete development Mm -hmm. that's going to start putting together a slightly more um well a better rounded and i say athlete i know a lot of people push back and be like ah i'm not an athlete no i like it i think it's right i think you're right Exactly. Just just think runner when I say athlete, but more rounded runner. Mm. Um, and that's realistically one of the big tenets. On top of that, of course, we've got the areas that as runners, we do need to work on. We're told all the time the physios are telling us that we need to work on our glutes. We need to work on our core. We need to work on our hamstrings. <laughs> our quads are weak because of our, our knee pain, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, we need to work on those areas. Mm. Here, we spend a lot of time sat down as a as yeah, as 21st true. century especially now you know geez you don't even necessarily need to do your, your commute to work you may just be get up have Stay breakfast on, yeah. log on crack on um even those of us who run a lot so let's say you're doing 50 60 70 miles per week and that is a decent amount of running that's not to detract from those who aren't doing that but that is a, you know, what i'm saying is 
that takes up a chunk of your week time wise. Yeah, it does. But that compared to doing a 40 hour work week stuck in a swivel chair, um, it's still not, it's not, you're not creating balance there. That time sat in the chair is going to have an effect on how your body over time starts to become put together. You end up fairly tight and weak through your hip flexors. Mm-hmm. You end up fairly lengthened through your hamstrings. Um, you end up fairly weak through your core. And there's plenty we can do through these exercises to start to actually mitigate that. So that when we do get up and run, we don't run like a person who spends 40 hours sat in a swivel chair yeah. day in, a week in, week out. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. And my, my head's like filled now with like a billion questions. Um, so I think, yeah, I think like you're absolutely right. So 40 hour a week, I, I, so I'm running, we'll come on to me and mix. I've got a big question for you at the end. But I'm running, arguments say, 40 to 50 miles a week. Um, and I'm working, well, I'm working probably 70 hours a week, right? Now, mm. a lot of that's active, so I'm walking about, which is good. So that's good mobility and, and things like that. I'm, not, I'm lucky enough not to be sat down all the time. Um, but you're right, there's those people who are sitting down probably for 30, 40 hours a week. Is there like... Um, obviously on your YouTube channel, but is there like a, a series of either exercises or is there like, is there like a benefit of just going out and doing, I don't know, a class of Pilates instead of, I don't know, you know, cause it's really hard as you just say, it's like it's every day around us to try and fit something in. I always say to my clients that I work with, something's better than nothing. So if you can book into a half hour Pilates session or you can go and spend 45 minutes in a pool, it's better than doing nothing. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and that, for me, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, I think working on the principle that something you can be consistent with is going to make a way bigger difference than being a, a hero with doing, um, the, let's say, you know, you, you, you're committing in, in, let's say it's New Year, you're committing in January mm. to go into the gym for, for 90 minutes, three times a week, um, alongside your running, because you want to you know, come better around it. Chances are, if you're not doing that already, there's a reason, and it's probably time-related, why you're not doing that. So chances are, it's probably not going to stick. So what I'd much rather, similarly to as you just said, is have people take the approach of saying, right, I can commit to doing 20 minutes, two or three times per week, with some targeted exercises, either targeted based on a program. I mean, I've got a Bulletproof Runners program. We'll talk about that later. But a program which is specifically tailored around what runners need week in week out or even well even as simple as if you've ever been given exercises by a physio for a running injury and chances are you've done what most runners do which is as soon as you get back from the injury those exercises just straight out the window in the bin just gone forget about them just give yourself 20 minutes a couple of times a week just to revisit those exercises because chances are you got injured because there was a weak link. The physio identified the weak link, gave you some exercises to deal with them. Mm-hmm. You then dealt with them enough to get you back running. Yeah. And then you've not yeah, maintained that progress. So they're like tailored exercises for you. So they become your maintenance exercises. So even if you just did that, that would be huge. Yeah. I'm, so I'm if you're up on something, <laughs> sorry, yeah, no, sorry, you mentioned your Bulletproof program. T- just tell us what that is. Right, so the Bulletproof Runners program really works on this this little and often principle. In this kind of world where on YouTube, on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, there's a whole plethora of different exercises. You just you don't need to look very far to find lots of different running exercises you could do. I've kind of found that there are two reasons, two main reasons why us runners don't do our strength conditioning work. One is, yes, the time side of things, but the other is overwhelm. It's yeah. the knowing that that there's... There's this thing I need to be doing. And as soon as I open the box to look for what I should be doing to get to tick that, that box, there's just a, a million and one different options. And I find the kind of paralysis, the, the analysis paralysis is a real thing in that respect. Mm-hmm. So what I've done is I've dialed it back and I've taken an approach saying, right, if you as a runner can commit to giving me two to three times a week, 20 minutes worth of workouts, then I'll pull together 
very specific exercises that I know, like I said, working with runners in this capacity since 2007, I know what the big rocks are. I know what the things are that 99% of runners need to work on and we'll package them up in ever changing workouts. So week by week, the workouts vary so that across a longer period of time, we cover all bases and they can just be short little quick hitter workouts. So Good you chat. tag them on the end of, let's say, you tag them on to the end of a, a Monday recovery run. You tag them on to the end of a midweek easy run. You tag them on to the end of park run. Um, and you just, two or three times, about 20 minutes, you know that over time, yeah. you're covering those bases in a way that's going to stick from a, um, from a lifestyle perspective. Yeah. And for me, it's the biggest thing habit exactly yeah. and I've, I've tried to be many things on youtube over the years in this in the running the kind of the running world yeah um and it's taken me probably the best part of 10 11 12 years to really kind of figure this out because although my background is in, is in sports injuries and although my background is in working with runners face to face and kind of really dialing in to the specifics of their injury i feel that my place in the world now is to be the guy, not the guy who will blind you with science, although I can back up what I'm saying. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But I'm not trying to be the guy who's trying to baffle you into submission. Yeah. I want to be the guy who will just finally be the one who makes you do these exercises because I've given you them in a way that's digestible, mm. doable, and you can see the results from doing them. So we've got now... In the current cohort going through, we've got about 150 runners who are working through the, the foundation program, um, which started at the beginning of June. Um, we've got more runners coming in this month, wow. and we've got a real community going as well. So it's the, the final piece of this pie is accountability, mm -hmm. because there's one thing, and I've, I've had on my website for a long time, downloadable programs that you can download, you can check out. You can see all the exercises, all the videos for the exercises. But the reason why people don't do them, even the ones they pay for, yeah. is that there's no one holding them accountable. Yeah. They're there on a really motivated Monday saying, yeah, I'm going to do James's program. That's going to solve my problems. That's going to solve my weak glutes, my weak core, my running form. But you know what? As soon as we hit later in the week, let alone the next week, um, it's all gone out the window. Yeah. So accountability getting people into the Facebook group. We talk in the Facebook group on a daily basis. We get them to get people to log their exercises. It sounds a lot, but it's not. It's actually really lightweight. And it's mm. really what it takes just to make the difference to keep people on track. And you know As what? You, say. You, Sorry, fall mate, off, you fall off one week, you come straight back into it. That's yeah. the thing as well. It's not, oh yeah, that was that thing I was meant to be doing. No, it's come on. Back at it. Yeah, it's accountability. That's what I was just going to say to you. Is is that that is the thing? It's I've got clients like that. They turn around and say, "Well, I know I've got to do it because I've got to speak to him at the end of the week." <laughs> it's it's this it's that sort of thing, you know. Sometimes, especially with this, I think you nailed it with this strength and conditioning. To, to there's nobody in a gym unless you're like paying like a million quid for a PT or whatever it is. You've mm. got nobody to make sure you're doing the stuff. You've got nobody pressurizing you to to get down the gym or you know whatever. Yeah. So have that in accountability, but also with that community aspect of you which you've created, because you've got a support network there as well. Mm. I think that's really powerful, and and that hopefully can um, keep you on the track uh, on working on this strength because it, it is so important. Yeah, and as runners, we are in general, a very motivated bunch. We're a bunch of yeah. self-starters. We, 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 you know, if it wasn't for something going on intrinsically, you wouldn't get out the door to do it. Yeah. So that's there. Um, the, the technical side I can provide, I can tell you what to do. That's not a mm. problem. And boil it down to a digestible package. Mm. Um, but we see it all the time with, with running clubs. We see it with park run. We see it with online running communities. It's an individual sport, but it's best enjoyed with others. Yeah, hundred um, percent agree. And the, the same, the same thing, the same thing is true here. Um, I've got a question for you: How do people yeah. actually get involved in this program? Um, so there's a link which I'll give you to put in the description okay. underneath this on YouTube and um, on the podcast. I can do that on the pod as well, actually. On the podcast as well, yeah. I'll give a special deal for um, 
for these runners and uh yeah there'll be a, a link for them to click so i'll send that across right. once we finish this interview mate okay yeah and no, i appreciate that because honestly there's so many people so many runners you know even just my clients you know who could benefit from something like this um you know, as I said, especially with like, you know, we've got London Marathon ballot next week. People, you know, maybe getting a space for the first time and they're like, oh, Jesus, I've got to worry about the running. But you you mm-hmm. can't neglect, honestly, you cannot neglect this side of things. And even more so like, and I'll come on to it in just a sec, but, you know, myself or, or others who are trying to now progress in their running, not necessarily in terms of speed, but in terms of, um, I always look at it, how did I perform? Did I you know, how was I able to not walk, uh, you know, through that marathon or was I able to keep that speed and keep that fitness through the whole distance, whatever it is better than I did last time. And, you know, to look at, to do that, the only way you're going to do that apart from, you know, trying to get really good quality sessions out, you're running, but also to work on this other side of the, of the other part of it, because the two go hand in hand. It's, it's interesting. So I, I try to be very intentional with how I position this and, and how I answer questions like the question we, we led with. If you remember what I said, or well, actually, if you remember what I didn't say, I didn't say anything about getting faster. No. Um, because for me, the performance side of things, and, and I don't think it's just, I don't think it's just my um, bias as a kind of sports injuries guy. I think it's a fairly... I think it's a fairly well-reasoned argument that we get quicker as a result of consistent training. A hundred percent. Quicker as a result of being out there week after week, day yeah. after day, being yeah. able to gently squeeze that weekly volume up. Because yeah. oh, geez, I've been, I've been the coach. I've been out this long time now, and I've been the coach who's been into this fad and into that fad. But you know what? I'm trying. I'm really trying not to swear here. Um, but you, you know what? It's um, the, the only thing that matters realistically for 99 percent of runners is volume um if you can get out there yeah. and just do more quality running yeah. um then you are going to get faster Absolutely. now the only way that happens is if you don't break yourself exactly if you don't get injured and the way we don't get injured is that we're good about two things one is getting on top of the strength conditioning side of things and making sure that we're looking after our body outside of just running all the stuff that I talk about and have talked about so far. Mm -hmm. The other thing is making sure that you're not making some ginormous clangers when it comes to your training plan. Okay. You're not screwing up by making massive leaps in all the wrong directions when it comes to how you're putting together your plan and going out and executing it. You can do all the, we can do all the strength conditioning work in the world but if you've got a crazy coach who makes you do crazy things, and the worst crazy coach is always when you're self-coached, um, then you're you're still going to get broken. Yeah. Um, so if you get all these bases covered, that's when you get quicker. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's where people speak to me about my times, you know, coming from like effectively a five-hour marathon down to almost three and a half. Have I done um, that? Just slowly but surely increased the volume, slowly, slowly but surely made myself more consistent. And if the consistency's been there, which it has been, then that's why everything is t- taken care of itself. You know what I mean? It's it, that's that's as simple as it is. And I've neglected strength and conditioning, mm-hmm. right? So imagine, imagine how awesome I would. I mean, I'm awesome, but imagine how awesome I would be if I was <laughs> Boston qualifier. Here I come. So, right. so right <laughs> here we go. So this is this. I'm now your client. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got. Berlin, I've got New York, right? Yeah. I'm running, like I said to you, I'm running well, peak mileage is about 55 miles. Uh, I'm running consistently in the week. Uh, I basically do about 35 miles in the five days in the week. And then I'll jog on and I'll add on a long run with a recovery run, depending on how I feel with the recovery run at being the distance. Um, but in general, the the week is is made up of four days, one day rest, and mm. it's a lot of double running because of the just my work. I can't get out and do those medium distance runs, which I used to love to do. But a lot of it is double running, which I quite enjoy actually. So mm-hmm. one will be one will be easy, one will be relatively hard, or you know I'll blend it out. Yeah. In terms of strength and conditioning, 
where do I go? What do I do? So how many weeks down is this to uh, Berlin? Well, I started a 20 week plan. I gave myself 20 weeks for New York. I'm using Berlin literally as a training run. Um, yeah. I'm going there purely to run the distance. I'm not looking to put any time down and New York will be the same. I'm not looking to put a time down. I won't look to run a time until the, into 2024 is when I'm next looking to put some pace in. This is purely experience that I'm doing this for really more than anything else. So that that's why I just want to get stronger. So then when I come into April, I'm then able to attack. Gotcha. Okay. So you're still towards the back end of the period where I don't mind too much as you're kind of, you're building the mileage right now, um, as opposed to kind of getting to the point where it's your, your real kind of peak weeks, yeah. weeks where you're combining the bigger mileage with some quality sessions. In this, this earlier phase, I don't mind you doing a bit of work within the strength conditioning sessions where you are taxing your legs a little bit more. So we are beginning to throw, you know, various kind of lunge variations, those sorts of big compound movements in where you do feel, maybe even the next day, you feel a bit of an effect. Um, a little bit of, okay, I definitely had a workout yesterday yeah. with my legs off the, back of, off the back of that sort of thing. Because do, firstly, that's quite a satisfying feeling. But secondly, obviously we do want at some point in the year to be, really trying to build strength out and out strength. So even if, if you're a runner who's used to lifting weights and doing a bit more resistance work, where you are on a marathon plan at the moment, I wouldn't mind you continuing to do a little bit of that. But as you get into the plan a little bit more towards those bigger weeks, that's where I actually would specifically get you backing off that kind of work. Okay. Okay, backing off the big compound movements, which are going to leave your legs tired. Mm -hmm. And I'd focus more on movements which are focused on single leg stability, focusing on particularly hip stability, ankle stability, um, and exercises which are going to be targeting your core, exercises which are going to be targeting your glutes from an activation point of view and a real kind of functional strength point of view in terms of being able to, again, if we think about the glutes, not see how long you can hold you know, various bridge variations for. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, right, if we do various different single leg deadlifts, single leg squats, those sorts of things, how well can we maintain the quality of movement, the quality of stability um, within those movements? So those sorts of exercises, even things like a, sort of an arabesque type of exercise, they're not going to be challenging your legs in the same kind of way as a compound exercise would do, like a big um lunge set or a big deadlift set or a big squat set or anything like that you're not going to have the fatigue carried over into your training week as much from those sessions as you would do from those big compound movements when i say compound movement i mean movement which is really starting to use multiple big muscle groups movement across multiple joints so think about a squat for example um, or again as i said a lunge mm. they're gonna have more of a, an impact in terms of the, the lingering fatigue going into the week. It'll have an impact on the sessions that you do. So then we can look at, as we get into these kind of bigger weeks and we're doing these um, workouts, which are a little bit lighter on the legs and a little bit more focused on quality of movement rather than um, simply trying to make you stronger. So we're looking at balance and stability and all those sorts mm -hmm. of things. Activation. Um, that's when we look at where we put them in the week. And you said you already ring fence an off day. You ring fence a rest yeah. day. I, I wouldn't want to mess with that. Okay. Some people will think, okay, well, that's a, I'm not doing a lot of running there. So that's where I could stick a, a strength workout or strength and mobility workout. Mobility we haven't touched on yet. That's another important part of this. Um, but I would rather instead ring fence that rest day and have you working on the on the easier run days in the week to tag in an extra 20 minute yeah. little workout like the bulletproof workouts um avoid doing it after a long run mm -hmm. avoid doing it after a particularly intense session so let's say you're doing track intervals or something like that let's not finish them with a you know a, a workout but if you've got those three easier workout yeah. little run days in the week that's perfect. That's a good time to be doing those, those extra workouts. Mm. Um, in terms of mobility work, again, this is a perfect time to be doing it because as we start building up the mileage, we start building up imbalances. Anyone who, anyone who struggled with 
here's a good example, ITB syndrome. Yeah. Um, so usually we see lots of ITB syndrome as we get into your autumn and spring marathon training big weeks. Okay, so as people get into their kind of 16, 18, 20 yeah, yeah, mile long yeah. runs, obviously there's been a lot of running getting up to that point and they're doing a lot of weekly mileage alongside those long, long runs. But we're also seeing that the effect of that bumping up of mileage for those who are prone to a bit of an imbalance, chances are that imbalance is getting stronger and stronger. So mm-hmm. people get really tight around the outside of their hip, particularly through muscles like tensor fascia lata because glute knee isn't working well. That's where we're going to start to start to have an issue. So what you can you can do is make sure that you're combining these, like I said, activation, stability, core, glutes type exercises mm. with particularly lots of hip mobility work. Yeah. If you can just keep your hips moving well, if you do nothing else, um, you can just keep your hips moving well. That's, that's going to take you a long, long way as a runner. Yeah, exactly. It's going to take you a long way as a runner. Um and I know some of us are prone, obviously, to, to other areas. So yeah, let's yeah, say sure. it could be calm. The same could be true. But hip mobility is a combination of hip mobility and stability. Um, if we get just all runners working regularly, just tickling those two things, yeah, that's see a lot of your injuries. Okay. Does that, does that make yeah. sense? That does make sense. And it's, again, my head's now full of stuff that I sh- thinking about oh maybe i could do that maybe i could do that and it is it's, it's that sort of thing this is why it's such a good um show to do because even if we can get you know one person out of this listing going actually you know what i'm now gonna that's made me think about this slightly differently um and it makes as you say it makes them stronger um and everything else will take care of it so i think to to sort of round it off right mm. if you got if you was able to give three simple, I don't like to use the word tips, but three bits of advice for any sort of runner, what would they be in terms of, of, of how to become or, or how to, yeah, just to, how to get strength and condition into your life? What's the sort of three things to sort of focus on? I know you just spoke about the hips and things again, but is there sort of three main tips or main things that they, we should be doing or that kind of stuff to sort of round it out, to sort of leave people with something go, you know what? I've just listened to that. I'm now going to do bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I think little and often is definitely the key. And, and I know that's not super actionable piece of, of information mm-hmm. in terms of this specific exercise, but we are all so different. And I think if we just take that first principle of saying, right, I'm just going to make time multiple times across the week, small chunks, rather than beat myself up because I can't find 90 minutes to get to the gym, then you're more likely to actually begin to get some of this work done in a meaningful, more consistent way. So that's got to be got to be number one. Um, Number two is that, again, this is dependent on where you are in your training year. Um, Yes, there's times when it's definitely more appropriate to start lifting heavier, getting in the gym, doing some resistance work. But to be honest, the Bulletproof program, for example, is entirely for the first two blocks of 12 weeks, the, the Bulletproof Foundations program, which everyone starts with, then the Build program, it's all body weight exercises. It's right. exercises you don't need equipment for. Um, and I would much rather have people who are just focused on using what they have around them, not putting barriers in their way, yeah. to just do a little bit of regular single leg stability work. I'm always, well, it's been, it's been too long. I'm actually no longer surprised, but it always reminds me of how how um, shocking it is when we get to a point where we're starting to throw in a little bit of the more challenging single leg balance work, which quite frankly, in the big scheme of things, isn't the super challenging stuff. And people are all over the place, yeah. clearly have done enough of this stuff in the past sorry so James, just when you, doing... sorry James, when you say single leg balance give one easy example of a single of an exercise that so shows really simple example yeah simple example uh something like a single leg single leg deadlift so standing on one leg yeah. the way i try to get people to do it um if we're just talking it through yeah. so you're standing on one leg take your if you're on your left leg take your right hand and go and touch your big toe and that's okay? it Bending at the knee, bending at the hip, and then come back up to standing. So down and back up. 
Okay, if you can picture that, sounds really straightforward, sounds really easy, but you do 10, 15 of those. That's how, how easy it is. Yeah. Um, what we always do is bend over through the back. I want to keep your back straight. Want to yeah. Sit back through the hips, bend the hip, bend the knee, go touch your big toe um, okay, yeah. on the opposite foot. That sort of thing, down, yeah. up, down, up, down, up, it's challenging. It'll get you working through your glutes. It'll get you finding that, oh, perhaps my knee's wobbling left to right because my my combined hip stability and ankle stability isn't great. You'll find out. So that's that, that's definitely one that people can go and work on. Yeah, I, I um, think that's, that's a cracker. The last one, we hear lots of um, lots of information about stretching. Um, mm. It kind of does my head in a little bit because people just want to people just want to call it stretching and it's either good or bad mm -hmm. okay let's get a little bit nuanced please like i said i don't want to baffle people with science i don't want to just i don't know baffle people into submission but it, it's not as straightforward as is it good or bad there are different forms of stretching and of course different parts of the body different different areas um and of course depending on what you injury wise are predisposed to or had a problem with in the past makes it more or less appropriate to stretch different areas but please, God, listen to your body. Like, yeah. if you are Dave, who has has a kind of a history of knee pain when he runs, um, and he finds that, you know what, when I take the time to stretch my quads after I run, and I do a little bit of a warm-up that involves a bit of dynamic quad stretching as well, um, or I do some drills and I warm those muscles up, you know what? My knee pain isn't as bad. My knee pain goes away and my knee pain doesn't hurt the next evening or the next day if I do a, a bit of a stretch after my run. Then please don't take all this information that we see on the internet. People mm. saying that stretching is the devil. Um, mm. Stretching, if anything, increase injury rates, blah, blah, blah. And um, and run with it. Don't dump your stretch. Don't dump your stretching if you are Dave. Mm. Um, because you know intuitively that things feel better when you do. The reality is that different parts of the body need different things. Okay, so if we spend a lot of time, if you, if you already have quite flexible ankles and you spend, and in fact, to a point where ankle stiffness isn't brilliant for you and you probably do put a bit more strain on your knees because of it, then generically being told that you need to stretch your calves and therefore stretching your calves a whole load probably will open you up to more injuries. And in fact, those runners do need to work on a bit more ankle stiffness. So things like skipping would be better time spent than stretching. Oh. But equally, if you're, if you're Jane, who spends a whole lot of time sat down at a desk every day, um, gets a little bit of low back pain, punches a bit tight through the hips, also does a load of cycling. Um, you know what? A bit of hip flexor stretching wouldn't go amiss. And um, yeah. uh, it's, it's just different things for different people. So, yeah, don't don't throw the baby out of the bathwater with that sort of thing. Yeah, I think, I think honestly, I think again, that's another area. Probably do a whole episode on that about stretching because you know, I mean, you'd be amazed. I mean, you know, obviously, there's coach sessions that we lead, you know, with the stretches that we do afterwards and stuff like that. It's, but even myself, I just find I do it through the day. I'm like, leap, put my feet up, uh, you know, against the wall when I'm stretching in, and I feel the benefit of it from doing it. I do it in the most random places, like in the lift and things like that, but. It, uh, if you don't do it, honestly, it, you can really notice. If you, uh, if I'm not doing it, I think it's because I'm getting older. But I really do think I really do notice it, um, especially when I get into the miles and you know it starts, you know, putting those loads through the calves, doing you know just easy, just calf drops. You know, it's it's, it's to just bread and butter, and it, it really works. It is, and and again, I'm not trying to be the the stretching guy. There's a video, a couple of video videos ago on my channel, which is what's the title like why stretching your hamstrings is a waste of time um and and for some runners many runners it is because the issue isn't short yeah, hamstrings. Yeah, yeah. the issue is imbalance around the hips and pelvis that makes your hamstrings feel tight so there's more to it um but again just not throwing the baby out of the bath water and hearing that stretching is bad and therefore mm. not stretching at all that's probably the worst thing you can do the best thing you can do is learn what your body needs and i suppose that realistically that is the third tip Yes. Listen to your body. Hear what it's trying to tell you. Also, listening to the trusted voices around you. So, if your yeah. physio is you need to work on your glutes, then it's probably a good idea not to mm. dump the glute exercises after three weeks. Um, do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah, yeah. it's just being practical about it. That that for me is. I think that if I had to sum up in a nutshell my approach, it's practicality. Yeah. Um, 
and it's saying right this is this is stuff that works let's make it easy for you let's make it digestible um and let's make it so you're actually going to freaking do it yeah um, and uh, you know what mate i think that's a, and that is a brilliant way to to sort of get to, to take us out because that is why i love what you do and i can't recommend the stuff that you do whether it's people check out the youtube channel we'll do the we'll do the really good plugs in it james what i say but or, or go over to the website because it is it's that plain and simple approach, which I use for my coaching on the, on the running side of things, but it is that plain and simple approach to this strength and conditioning and all aspects of it that mm-hmm. I think is so appealing to everyday runners. And I, and I would, and I honestly hand on heart recommend, I wouldn't have James on if I didn't recommend it, but check his, the stuff out because it is gold dust people. Honestly, some of the, some of the, just the, the older videos on YouTube, you know, they're, they're amazing. No, I know. I listen. You, there's terrible ones. No, from honestly, honestly you own them. No, I do own them, and I encourage people. If you're feeling like, I don't know, if you want to laugh, just go back and look at some of those videos from 2014, 2015. It looks like I just rolled out of bed. Um, but honestly, I stand, by, I stand by. I stand by the information. Content the on thing. it is high. Yeah. I remember seeing the white. What was it the white ones? And uh, the, the, the stretch. I still do it now. When you know, up against the wall with your leg up and all this. I remember doing them all, James, right? I've done them all. I followed the videos. So I can't honestly recommend enough people to come your way. So, right, let's get the plugs in, okay? So, with uh, firstly, website, please. Website, kinetic-revolution.com is the kind of the, the blog, if you like. But the yeah. website, the program we're talking about is bulletproofrunners.com. Okay, um, and, yeah, and there'll be a link. Link in the description. Yeah, link yeah. in the description for that and on the podcast if you listen to this on the podcast yeah. youtube channel is under your name or kinetic it's my name so james okay. dunn so just it out. For yeah facebook group um so transform your running terrible branding these are all over the place but Good yeah man. transform your facebook group okay instagram um so james mg dunn please tell me on tiktok hell no unfortunately not no i don't have honestly i don't have i don't have time in my life i i should i would brilliant just just do it right but do it like a parody where you're just taking the piss out of yourself it's brilliant just i just think most of the stuff that we do on tiktok scarlet my daughter does it she's she's 11 she does it all she's just a whiz so it's just give it and let her crack on with it it's much easier yeah, I mean, mine's 17 months, so God knows what you're going to get if we do that. I, th- but, I, yeah. I think it'd be a slight improvement of what you're doing now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right, okay, so, yes, so make sure you check James out across all of that. The program, check the description, please, for that. All I can say to you is thank you very much for giving up your time. I know you're a busy guy. I really appreciate it, and I hope that everybody's learned something tonight, because I have. So thank you very much to, for coming on, brother. Mate, and- it's been absolutely pleasure thank you for having me no and that's um yeah we must do it again and and we could even use the other program next time instead of zoom but i quite like zoom um and <laughs> make sure make sure if you if you miss any episodes of the long run the award-winning long run podcast um that you check out uh, I, I i love this stat now that people are now binge listening to all all the episodes which just is is amazing uh, so make sure you go back and check out all the episodes if you watch the video thank you very much um yeah and that's it so thank you very much james and i will see everybody next time we're live so say bye thank you very much i'll see you again take care guys bye